Recently, a woman said to me, my counselor told me I need to love myself more and I need to improve my self-esteem. But the Bible says I'm not to think more highly of myself than I should, so which is it? Do I love myself enough or too much? Now this can be a trick question for many Christians. The Bible isn't against us loving ourselves. In fact, it assumes it. For when the apostle Paul tells husbands to love their wives as their own bodies, he assumes that they love their own bodies. Or when Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves, there's an assumption of natural self-love or self-concern for our own well-being that is common to all of us. Proverbs also tells us that he or she who acquires wisdom loves his own soul. However, as Christians, we've often associated loving self with rampant selfishness or egocentricity, which is clearly against what God's word teaches. So let's look at what biblical self-esteem and self-love would look like. First, self-esteem is the way we feel about ourselves and self-image is the way we think about ourselves. And since our thoughts and feelings go together, if we think too highly of ourselves, we will have an inflated self-esteem. On the other hand, if we think too lowly of ourselves, we will feel inferior and worthless. A healthy self-image is where you see yourself truthfully as God sees you. This means that you see your beauty and your brokenness. You don't only see one side of yourself. Some Christians get caught only in seeing their sinful or shameful side and forget that they are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made and that God has indeed put gifts and talents inside of them to be used to serve him and to serve others. On the other hand, some people are quite blind to their sinful side and can be jealous, prideful, arrogant, and judgmental and don't even see how sinful those things are. When you love yourself too much, the focus is on you, either how wonderful you are and how much you deserve or how miserable you are because life and people and God aren't giving you everything you think you should have. When you love yourself biblically, here are three things that you would do. First, you would seek God as your highest priority because God says he is our soul's only true satisfaction and that following his ways leads to great joy. Second, you would seek God's wisdom for your life because Proverbs tells us that those who fail to find wisdom harm themselves. God tells us that his wisdom helps us see clearly through the world's philosophies and Satan's deceptions that may mislead us. And the third thing that we'll do if we love ourselves is we'll correct and discipline ourselves. Now at first this may seem counterintuitive. People think that when they love themselves they should be able to indulge themselves because they feel so special or entitled. But credit card debt, obesity, sexual promiscuity, pornography, drug abuse, and alcoholism are at our all-time highs right now. Not only do we indulge our fleshly appetites, but we also indulge our immature and sinful ways of thinking and feeling and behaving. We sulk in self-pity, we throw temper tantrums when we don't get our way, we nurse angry and hateful thoughts, wallow in morbid self-analysis, and the results of a self-indulgent psyche or lifestyle is not happiness or good self-esteem, but bondage. When we indulge our sinful nature, we don't feel better, we feel worse. God tells us that one of the causes of self-hatred is ignoring discipline. So I'm not sure what your counselor meant, whether you love yourself enough or too much, but by looking over these applications, evaluate where you are in loving yourself biblically and seeing yourself truthfully. Ask God to show you areas where you need to grow so that you can be all that he calls you to be. God bless.